most musical way I know of to work on picking accuracy is Carter style rhythm and lead. The leads are on the low strings and the groove bounces along on the high strings. It starts with a folksy boom chucka boom strum pattern and then we add melody or fills but always keeping the feel going. Working on this stuff reminds us that the open position is not just for beginners. And now we'll never be bored of our cowboy chords again. Hey, I'm Eric Haugen. Check the description box below for tabs and backing tracks on my website, information about exactly what sound tools I'm using today, how to schedule lessons with me, live streams and more on Patreon, and my deep dive courses. It's all on my website. Okay, so we're going to start with Willie Nelson's Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, because that's going to establish the boom chuck a boom strum pattern. Let's take an E chord. And I think you can see how I'm breaking that up. Root and the fifth. And already, we're going to have a walk to get to the B7. If you don't know a B7 chord, there it is. A nice little chromatic walk. That's all it is. Back to the E. Now, bonus round. I think it's an overdub on the record, but there you could do a little hybrid pick thing where it's E, two, three, four, five, six. That's really kind of a sneaky little A chord. I'm gonna be doing some Willie stuff. Maybe next week. <laughs> so great. What an icon, man. Great cool guitar player. But anyway, four and two, because that's really part of that A chord, or I don't know how you want to think of that, but so you could go one, two, three, four, one, two. Ooh, that's cool already. There's our B7 with the alternating bass. Now it's gonna do that again. Okay, let's just do it. B7. Great walk up. We're getting to an A chord. So this is a neat chromatic, because you know, major pentatonic is, or really major. And you would have thought he would have gone like this, but he actually is coming in with that F chromatic. Notice their quarter notes. I say that all the time. Groove and fill, when you're working on groove and fill playing, keep it to quarter notes because that keeps the groove going. Us guitar players love to go. the next chord I don't know I got lost in noodle land let's not let's just keep it to quarter notes like Willie did and then we're just gonna hang on an A two three four five six seven eight back down the B7 little hammer on that walk down but still just quarter notes really There. So this is like my my uh, uh, you know homework assignment one. Okay. Next week. Next week we'll do some Willie leads. Like so cool. Okay. That's assignment one. That gets you used to the boom chuck a boom and doing simple quarter note fills. Now, wait, where'd my capo go? I would be remiss in talking about Carter style playing without, you know, teaching Wildwood Flower, which is kind of like the little wing of, of Carter style playing. C chord, 
let's look at just the melody. Capo, fourth fret. Now, of course, if I was really, really doing this Mama Maybell Carter style, uh, it would have been with a thumb and fingers like that. Cool thing to do. Maybe I'll do a whole video about that one of these days, that style, almost banjo style playing. But let's keep it with a pick. So we got that melody. Let's think about a C chord, but really you're only gonna grab those ones up there. That lick again. And yeah, I don't even worry about doing alternates on it. I have nothing to prove about how fast I can do old timey guitar, because I can't. Oh well, not the point. I'm worried about how clean I can do this with, with my right hand because it, it just it transfers over into everything else, being clean with the right hand or picking hand, you know, if you're lefty. Okay, first phrase. And now, that's a G. Think about a G, but you're only really gonna get those. I, I reference this song all the time. That alone is worth uh, this video. Neil Young, uh, War on Drugs, like this style of playing where a chord is not a thing, where it's broken into possibilities. Oh, the possibilities. Okay, anyway, there's the main phrase. And then, that's just a C chord, but yeah, that's all it is. Here comes an F chord. So that phrase. And then. All C. Great thing to work on. Just a great thing to work on. Yeah, I know it's not the most badass thing in the world, but I'm telling you, it transfers over. Now, a cool exercise you can do, by the way, in any genre, is sit around and do boom chugga boom strum pattern, and then put quarter note walks in there. And I'm thinking about major pentatonic. Anybody who's taken a lesson with me knows how much I say to do this. Because when you want to groove and fill, groove and fill playing, remember that you want to keep the feel going. You want to keep the rhythm going. We don't want to just go groove. You know, just fall apart into like how many notes can I fit in. Just keep that groove going. It's what's going to actually work best when playing with other people. You know, you could pick a different chord. Okay, F. Hmm. I could do this with any of my cowboy chords. By the way, if you don't know what cowboy chord is, it's just, you know, your standard chords. Your, you know, your C, A, G, E, D, D minor, you know, your open position chords. Folksy folks in America call them cowboy chords. You really hee hoo.
So Midnight Special, yeah, you could totally do a Carter style version of this. Lead Belly is kind of doing that in the Lead Belly version. I am tuned down one and a half steps to, uh, you know, C sharp standard. You know, I know that Lead Belly, you know, is known for doing C standard, but listen to the record, they might have sped up the tape. Sounds like C sharp to me. So it's gonna be, you know, C, F, and G, but let's put that melody on them bass strings. There's that first lick. It's funny how quiet this guitar is. For a 12 string, that's real quiet. And it's interesting, when you land that little melody, you're on that F. Then the C. So let's look at that opening. Here comes a little melody before the G. I think we can see that. I'm getting some fret buzz on that first fret because of this tuning, but there it is. Catch that little walk there. And now I'm kind of leaving Carter style to because I put the melody up on top. Here comes a because I'm seeing that C chord there, but 505. Cool kind of F. Let's look at that again. that little C chord there, always keeping that feel going. So I'm thinking about that C chord, but the melody is hiding right there. Cool, so th that A string is muted out. There's an extra two beats in the, in the Lead Belly version. You know, that's thinking about a G chord, but the melody is, yeah. bears mentioning that Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here, that's technically a Carter-style song, that. That melody's on the bottom. Just for optional extra homework, let's look at House of the Rising Sun. You could totally arrange this. Um, Carter style, you can't do this with every song. The melodies do have to be pretty simple. So my recommendation, if you wanted to do this, would be, you know, old gospel and folk melodies tend to work the best. And yeah, I'm kind of shifting this one from 6-8 to 3-4. Don't worry about it. The chord progression is A minor. C. D. Everybody should know this song anyway. It's just a classic. Like I played, like yeah, I've been playing this song since I was 14 years old. Anyway, melody on bottom, melody on bottom, that's already cool. Because it's not about how cool this arrangement is. It's about 
this this right hand, getting the feel for that accuracy. That's a neat E chord. E over G sharp. Yeah, because folks often ask me, do you have any exercises for picking accuracy? And yeah, this is super duper for old timey. Well, okay. If you're into roots rock, blues, folk, folk rock, classic rock, indie rock, everything other than like progressive metal and progressive jazz. But even that, I still argue you should be able to do this. This is kind of the roots of the instrument because I know that, you know, there's, I'm sure there's shreddy picking, string skipping exercises that are useful to do. I'm not going to say they're not, um, but for the genres of music that I enjoy and end up playing a lot of and playing with other people, this is one of those things that you're like, oh, this is cool to work on. It, it adds this, this depth, this very historical depth to your playing. That's all. If you enjoy my work, please like, subscribe, and share. That costs you nothing and helps people like me out immensely who work this gig. One more time around, this is how it works. You can book lessons with me, live streams, backing tracks, and charts. That's all on Patreon and my deep dive courses. That's all on my website. As Bill and Ted would say, be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday. Eat pizza. Eat pizza.